Hi, Galaspar here. Uh, talking about a new project I'm working on. And this is a Necromunda gang of House Cordor. Now, I've worked with House Cordor uh, uh, parts before, that whole kit, um, as a project to make some Chaos Cultists. So, here's a couple of them here. You can see I used the Cordor parts with a zombie kit to make something particularly nasty looking Nurgle inspired. Um, but that did leave me with half a Cordor kit. And I've been thinking for a while I should start a proper gang. And I had a bit of a think about Cordor and their uh, their motivations, their beliefs, and they have quite a high opinion of themselves. I mean, the uh, famous blunderbuss pole arms, affectionately known as blunder poles, uh, are thought to be based on a custodian spear, uh, as seen in some stained glass imperial window. Um, the idea being that the Cordor think of themselves as... Uh, representatives of heroes of old. Uh, so I thought, how about a knightly theme for a Cordor gang? And I had a look on the Lexicanum website, which is a wonderful resource uh, for bringing together bits of uh, Warhammer 40k lore um, for Imperial Saints. And I landed on Saint Brannicus. Now, he is famous in the Imperial history for beating 300 heretics to death with his own severed leg. And that, if that doesn't say grimdark to you, oh, I don't know what to say. So, my first knightly inspired Cordor ganger was this guy. Um, the helmet comes, I believe, from uh, the old Empire Knights kit. Uh, a little bit of trimming, and it fitted quite nicely into the cowl. And immediately you can see the sort of look I'm after. They are uh, scruffy as all hell, like all Cordor, but they believe themselves to be righteous holy knights. And I'm hoping that with a paint job I can sort of bring together something of the of the grandeur and the pomposity combined with the uh, the filth and the bedraggled nature. Um, and the second one I put together was this fella. Um, the head here came from a mounted Chaos Marauder from the uh, Age of Sigmar or Fantasy range. Um, Although I've uh, replaced the usual sort of Cordor armoured pad with this shield, again from the Empire Knights kit. So I think the hood gives him sort of a medieval executioner feel. And then the, uh, the shield ties him in with the knightly theme as well. So I think that carries on the, uh, the ideology nicely. Here's another made with a, an elaborate helmet. Um, this one, actually that's a, an autogun pole, but the blunderbuss ones being more effective and uh, more cost effective as well. Um, I modified that by removing the autogun barrel uh, and fixing this great big musket barrel here to give the blunderbuss feel. Uh, so that makes a good partner for the uh, previous helmeted guy. And with my third blunder pole user, I thought I'd go a little bit different. So this head comes from the Bretonian Peasant Command uh, sprue from the old kit. And has a bit of a, a jester flavour to it. Again, it's sort of the, the knightly court or the... Uh, the royal court feel. Um, no, he comes close to sort of breaking a rule here in that his face is pretty much exposed, although it is hooded. Um, what I might do when I'm painting him is um, give him some 
heavy face paint over the top as in this is this is not his own face he's wearing some uh, crude clown makeup or something I, I'll uh, I'll experiment a bit and see what works there but uh, I think it's quite a dramatic model I had to use that head because it's got a really uh, expressive look to it and the Bretonian peasant kit also allowed me to make this guy now he's, I'll admit, a bit odd, but um, one of the weapon options in the corridor list is a long rifle. So I wanted something, well, really quite long. So I turned to the Empire uh, State Troops handgunner kit and took the long gun from there. Uh, the body is from a Bretonian uh, peasant again um, with the addition of some grenades we've got some uh, assorted shields and whatnots around the back which are from the Cordor kit um, uh, Cordor head and finishing off with a dagger that came from the Empire Militia so he has a very different feel from the rest of the gang so far, but I think he blends in quite nicely. Again, this sort of medieval old world style. This next guy... Well, I started with a Bretonian head. And this it's from a Bretonian knight. The idea being that uh, there are... A number of different crests you could put on top and I thought what crest would work here ah St Brannicus a thigh bone so there we go that is a representative a representation of the holy thigh bone of St Brannicus coming out this guy's head and I think that makes for uh, an unusual model and added a few bits down there just detritus on the base to help him be sturdier because there's only really two small points of contact uh, on this pair of legs so it allows him to be leaned right forwards gives him this dramatic pose and makes I think for a, a particularly interesting model next is a guy I put together again using a Bretonian body uh, cordial head and arm and I wanted to uh, looking at the new uh, cordial book I wanted to have a great sword in there um, but these sort of traditional knightly great swords thing it just looked too clean for cordial so this is a great big hacking sword from a beastman ungle and I like the the brutality of this really heavy uh, crude weapon um, together with sort of the um, the cod finery of the body I think that goes together quite quite well um, happy with how the angles turned out and how um, this very much monopose body uh, has a little bit of dynamism, just with a, a twist of the head there to give it a bit of um, bit of angle. Um, and then I moved on to a newer kit, because we now have a Redemptionist kit for Cordor. So what I put together here is the Redemptionist leader. Now. One thing I particularly wanted to do when assembling this guy was to chip away the uh, stained glass panel that covers uh, much of his head and the crest above it because I think that head is so fantastic it shouldn't be covered up. So it was pretty easy to trim it away. It's, uh, it's uh, not the smoothest perhaps and I might uh, give that a little more filing before I paint it but I'm quite happy with that I uh, also added some bells which I think came from the Empire Flagellant kit um, because they 
hung really nicely with the uh, sort of um, the tabard part, if you like, the uh, the split part of the robes there um, to uh, complement that motion quite nicely. So a minor conversion, but very happy with how he turned out. And the final model that I've made so far is this guy. Again, using the new uh, Redemptionist kit. Um, what I wanted was a, a champion, effectively, or a specialist uh, with a grenade launcher, which Redemptionist can take, and it's not something you sadly get on the Redemptionist sprue. So this one is taken from uh, an, um, an Imperial Guard Tempestus Scion. Um, and added a stub gun as a, a backup weapon um, and that comes from uh, I believe it's a Necromunda Enforcer um, now something I've noticed comparing the Cordor kit to the Redemptionists is that the Redemptionists have smarter robes, smarter weapons um, as far as I can see, this is where the money goes for House Cordor. When they're uh, collecting their scrap and paying their tithes, it all goes to equip the Redemptionists. And the finishing touch for this guy was a head from the Empire Flagellant kit. Um, I particularly like this head in that it's... Uh, he's effectively blinded, you know, he's got a, a mask over his eyes. Um, so it allows me to make a weapon that's not particularly fanatical, if you like, a grenade launcher, into much more of a zealous kit. Um, you can imagine that he's uh, tonking grenades blindly into the into the hive, um, trusting in the hand of the Emperor to guide his shot. So that, so far, is the Knights of St. Branicus. There's uh, nine of them so far. Um, what I would probably add, if and when I turn them into a complete gang, is uh, some juves. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to make them yet. I may end up buying a whole other cordial kit to work on that, but that's how it is when you're kit bashing. Suddenly these uh, these kits do rather add up. But for the time being, I'm going to take a few of these guys away and I'm going to work out a colour scheme for them and get them painted up. So I hope you'll join me in a few weeks' time uh, when I can show those to you. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.